Everything else will be taken care of if you seek him first. And that's why I constantly tell people, if God is not number one on your list as far as your priorities, then everything is out of proportion. If your job is up there, if your family is up there, if your religiosity is up there before God, then it's all out of order. It doesn't matter how many hours of prayer or singing or Bible or fellowship, if God is not the number one top of your list, then it's all in vain. And we will get all messed up spiritually. It says, all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. Amen? Amen. How many of you have enough trouble today? And then what I like to say is, you know what? Let's just say you're worrying about something today. How many of you are worrying about something today? Huh? Maybe, um, how are you going to pay the next whatever bill? Um, what happens if you die today? Then, then you worry about something that never will happen. Right? Hey, give it all. Give it all to Jesus. In Romans 15, it says, We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good and to build them up, for even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen upon me. So you know what? If people are putting you down and criticizing you and saying things evil against you, right? He says that this is going to happen. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs are the kingdom of heaven, part of the Beatitudes. So he's basically saying, you know what? You are going to get persecuted. You're going to get insulted. You're going to have people putting you down. But don't worry about that. Trust in me. The insults of those who insult you have me. And do not take revenge on those people that are insulting you. He says, vengeance is, vengeance is what? Mine. Mine, says the Lord. I will repay. You know, now you know you think God, he can vengeance, uh, take revenge a lot better than we can. So, you know, if you don't like what someone's doing to you, give it to God, and God will take care of that person. And, and the thing that I, 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 I tell people is that, you know, really, if there's somebody out there that is doing you wrong, or doing something that really bringing you down, you pray for that person and pray for that salvation of that person. That's where we should be as Christians, that having the heart of God, that none should perish, but all come to repentance. That's the heart of God. That's what we should believe. And if you're at a point right now, there's some of that you can't forgive, and you, you want to make it hard for them, maybe you don't have the heart of God. Maybe you need to start thinking, okay, I do need to start forgiving that person, because the only person I'm really hurting is myself. Praying for that person. And you know what? I've seen story after story of how when a person prays for somebody and miracles happen where that person comes to know the Lord and they have such a power testimony. And you know what happens to you? If you see someone that you hated and you had this attitude of unforgiveness, you see that person come and give their life to the Lord and that you are willing and you forgave that person and now that person's life is changed, you know what will happen to you? You'll be free from that experience that you had of hatred and unforgiveness. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other 
that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and one voice, you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you. I mean, if you really think about it, you might think that someone is not worthy of your respect and love. Well, why don't you turn it this way? How worthy are you before a holy God who has loved you and accepted you when you turn your life away? How many of you are worthy of His love? What is the penalty for sin? For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death. But thanks be to God for the free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the question is today, and I want each of you, each and every one of you to ask this question to yourself. Do I really trust in God? Where do I spend most of my time? Do I spend my time doing what God has commanded us to do? In being with a passion, reaching others to bring others into God's family? How much time do you spend? And if, you're, if you can't say, yes, I am doing it as much as I can to bring other people to the Lord. Because I think, as I look out here, a lot of you already have a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you really putting God first and His desire to spread the word and bring others into the family of God? If you like to memorize, and even if you don't like to memorize scripture, this is a good one to memorize. It comes from Proverbs, the third chapter. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge Him and he shall direct your paths. There's a command there, and there's obedience there. First of all, you trust and obey. Trust and obey, because there's no other way to be happy, to have the joy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. I found this on the internet. Why everyone but God? How often we trust each other and only doubt our Lord, we take the word of mortals and yet distrust His word. But oh, what light and glory would shine over all our days if we always would remember God means just what He Why is it that we doubt God's Word? God's Word is full of promises. And if we want to come back to the evil one, we have to have the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, to fight the spiritual battle that we're involved in. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust Him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You understand this? When you gave your life to the Lord, God gave you everything that you need to accomplish His purpose, to accomplish His will. He gave you His Holy Spirit. I can do all things through Christ. Do you believe in that?
Do you believe that God has given you everything you need to do His purpose? Today's song is a song by Laura Daniel. 